Okay, so today I come out to my garden. Flowers look pretty. You know what's bunk? My already crappy pepper plant is getting uprooted by a mole. And look at this. Look at this. And I see more through the bark. It's not cool. I'm getting my husband on the job. I see. Oh. No. Okay. So I'm getting the mole hunter on the job. He's really good at catching moles. This little booger has gone all the way <laughs> through this bed. Now, it doesn't look like a lot of damage, but the problem with these moles when they go under your plants is they create tunnels. These tunnels separate the roots from the soil, and then your plant dries out, and it dies. This is literally my only tomato plants, and this little mole has decided he's going to make a happy home in my vegetables, in my wood chips, and in my lawn. So we're going to find the first pile probably in the lawn and we're going to target him from there since he probably scurried back to his little home. So you come out to your yard, the yard that you slave away in, your, your beautiful manicured yard. You walk out to enjoy the day. You come outside and you see a giant mound of dirt, kind of like you see right here. This one's been tampered with a little bit. Um, you may see a few of them in a, in a certain area. Unfortunately, you have a mole or moles in your yard. Here's how you get rid of them. So kind of like I said, I work really hard in my yard. Um, I like a very manicured yard. I try and keep it looking good. And it can be frustrating when a little critter infiltrates in and starts to dig a bunch of mounds and kill your grass. Um, kind of like you see here. And like I said, it can happen in a given area. If you look a few feet away, the same mole, or what I suspect is the same mole, has actually digging a couple mounds. And it's in close proximity to our garden, which is not okay because if that thing uproots a, a plant, a vegetable plant, then I'm gonna be really, really upset. I've had a lot of success over the years in trapping these things. I've probably trapped over 100 um, in the short period of time that we've lived in our, our current residence. And here's how I do it. So for the purpose of this demonstration, the things you're gonna need are a little shovel, preferably with a, a short blade that's not too wide because you don't wanna dig too, too wide of a hole. You're gonna need a trap. I've used a number of different traps over the years and I found that this one, this is a Victor brand scissor style trap. Um, this one works best in my experience. Uh, this actually goes in the ground, in the tunnel, and cinches down and traps the mole and effectively kills it. Um, these tongs come with the trap, and I'll show you how that works here in a second. Lastly, all you're going to need is a bucket. Uh, the bucket serves a purpose, and again, I'll show you what that's for. Okay, so what I usually do first is I'll come out to the amount of dirt and I'll try to clear away as much of that surface dirt as possible and just set it aside temporarily. After doing that, I'll kind of dig around my fingers and usually what you'll find is a hole somewhere within that mound. So what you're going to do next is you're going to take your shovel and what I do is I'll, I'll dig out a square plug that I then pull out. Try to get that plug pulled out in one piece if you can. Clear away any loose dirt that might be in the hole. And then what we're gonna do next is poke and prod around here. And what you're hoping to find, you don't always, what you're hoping to find is an entry exit pathway. These guys dig tunnels, and what you want to do is find that tunnel and establish it. So it looks like there's one side of our tunnel there. Okay. All right, so there's one hole there coming into our little cutout plug area. 
And this actually works out perfect because if you flip around to the other side. So she's flipped around to the other side. Our one tunnel starts here and it comes straight out and goes to this side here. And I can already tell that in having done this while, that this isn't a very big mole. It's not a very mature mole. So um, they dig through the ground. These guys spend all day eating uh, grubs and earthworms, kind of like the one you see right here. So in one respect, it's actually good that you have moles because it kind of speaks to the health of your soil. But again, on the other hand, uh, they're a pain in the ass. So they've got to die, unfortunately. So the next step in this process, I go back down into the, the plug that I cut out and set my shovel at the edge of one of the two holes. And what we're gonna try to do is reestablish that tunnel, that path for the mole to pass through. Our trap will sit right on top of that tunnel and the next time he comes through, he'll, he'll set off the trap and it'll hopefully do its job. So we'll take our, our shovel, place it in here and kind of compact the loose dirt that you set aside in order to rebuild the tunnel. Okay, so I've re-established re the tunnel here, kind of like I explained a second before. Something I glossed over, I, I forgot to mention, is that I wear gloves when doing this process. Um, and I'll actually take a little bit of dirt and I'll rub it on my gloves. The reason behind doing that is I've, maybe this isn't true necessarily, but I found that I have a little more success if I mask my scent and my odor while doing this process. And if I get it on the trap, if I'm doing this barehanded, um, it seems like the mole is a little more apprehensive to actually use that, that path. So if and when you do this, my recommendation would be to use gloves. So next step is going to be to take your, your scissor trap or whatever kind of trap it is that you are choosing to use. Again, this is just what I've had the most success with. Um, it's a pretty straightforward trap. It's got a couple clasps here. It's spring loaded. It's got a little trigger lever. This is what the mole actually hits um, to activate the trap. This little pin here attaches to that trigger point and makes the trap go off. So in order to get that set up, you can take your trigger pin, you set it over the top, and then take your little tongue device that comes with the trap. That helps you gain a little leverage in order to get this trigger situation set up. So you open the trap like that, take the trigger pin and the little trigger lever and get it set, kind of like that there. Now a little little pro tip, again, this is something I've, I've figured out through trial, trial and error is I'll set this trigger point on a hair trigger to where when I look at it, that pin is barely holding on. So this little gap in between here, between the trigger pin and the trigger itself is what I'm talking about and see how it's set up for a hair trigger. So I wanna make it to where anytime this thing even so much as brushes up against this trap, it actually goes off. So we've got our, our trap pretty much situated and set up. You want to be careful with it now because again, it is spring loaded and you want to set this thing off on yourself and lose a finger in the process. So there's a little safety pin that comes with this thing. I flip that over while I'm working with it. It does on occasion go off because of my hair trigger. Um, so I will roughly get this situated into the middle of the tunnel that I rebuilt and reestablish. Being mindful and careful while handling this thing. And then I'll pull it back out and what that has done, as you, you can see here, is it'll, it sets up a couple of channels that I kind of dig out. Reason for doing that is I don't want anything to get caught up on the trap when it goes off. Um, if it gets hung up on something, it's not going to close all the way and you may miss out on your opportunity to, to kill the mole. So open it up a little bit. Try not to tamper too much with that path. And once you have that set up, you now need to build a bridge in the middle of this thing. Um, the bridge goes perpendicular, runs perpendicular to the path and tunnel that you have set up. And that's what the mole actually runs into um, after passing through the gateway of the trap. So again, I'll take that, a little bit of that dirt we set aside and right in the middle, build a bridge like so. It only has to be about an inch in width. You just want to make sure that it's tall enough to where when you reset the trap in the tunnel, that trigger is just barely grazing the top of this bridge. So it should look something like that there once it's all done and set up. Now you're going to take your trap. You're going to put it back in those little slots, those channels that you cut out. And I will carefully, again, carefully, I cannot emphasize this enough, push down on the trap until the trigger tongue 
again, is barely, barely touching the top of that bridge that you built. So now what'll happen is the mole will either come in this way or this way. He'll run into that bridge. He'll activate the trigger. This thing will cinch up and clamp down on the mole, effectively killing it. So the last little part of this process, I actually use one of the tongs to reset that safety because I don't want to stick my fingers in there once it's all set up, like we've already discussed. This trap is now hot, it is set. If anything hits it or touches it, it will go off. Last thing I do is I try to disguise my trap as best as possible by taking that grass plug that we cut out and carefully laying it over the trap. If these moles think something has been tampered with, they are extremely cautious. And I've read online, I don't know whether or not this is true either, but I've read that they will actually avoid an area and stay still for up to 24 hours if they think um, there's a potential danger up ahead of them. So we'll hide it like that. I take my bucket, I cover the entire thing. And this serves two purposes. One, we have cats and dogs. I don't want the cat or dog to get in here and, and hurt or injure themselves. Also, it disguises any scent, um, noise, anything like that from the mole. It also keeps the area dark, uh, which I also like for obvious reasons. I set everything up on here. I take my shovel that I use, I put it on top just to add a little additional leverage, make sure this thing doesn't get knocked over by our dog and start the waiting game. I'll check this thing every 24 hours, give or take. Usually, depending on the mole and how busy of a mole it is, I'll catch these things in about a day. I've, I've waited and been patient up to two weeks and, and caught it in that period of time, um, which makes it all the more satisfying. But uh, good luck. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below, ask down below. All right, look what else I found. A birdie tangled in my birdie netting. So uh, I don't know if this guy's injured, but he sure is scared. You are a tangled mess. I don't think he's injured. Okay, relax, you're gonna hurt yourself. All right, I think he's okay. He even bit me, a little feisty thing. Look at this little feisty guy. You little booger, let go of the net and I'll let you go. Let go. Look at that. Caught myself a robin. All right, we got him out. He looks okay, so we're gonna let him go. Ah, fly away, birdie. He's fine. Well, that's what he gets for trying to eat my strawberries. Meanwhile, there's you. You know that there was a bird in a net about five feet away from you, right? There, fatty. Mm -hmm. I'm alright. Nobody worry about me.